Hello. We Hi. have a question today from Jamie Strings. Thank you, Jamie, for leaving a question on one of our videos. Um, so Jamie said they have a video request relating to one of the traits they're looking for in an agent, which is a good business person and a shrewd negotiator. Could you do a video explaining the nuts and bolts of what happens when agents go out on submission? And first of all, bravo, Jamie, because I think there are a lot of authors who think they're looking for somebody who loves their book. And I think that you're looking for a true business partner to help grow your career. And I love that. I love that. Yeah. Why? Well, I, I think because that's always the front facing thing, right? Like we start with the book and then everybody feels like it's about the book because the book is the thing that gets the agent. Yeah. Um, but there, and that's why we've done so many videos on the call and questions to ask and ways to handle it. So go watch those. But that's like just the first leg of the race. There's so much that you need to consider and ask and do in order to find that perfect agent fit for you. Well, and the truth is your perfect agent doesn't actually have to love your book. That's true, though. That's controversial. Uh, well, you know, what else is new? Everything's that's controversial. True. But yeah. um, I think that there are a lot of agents who do really great work for their clients and a lot of clients who will say that they have the best agent ever. But there's never a discussion of whether the book is loved. Yeah. Well, we don't love every single book we work on, but I guess I don't approach every book like do I love it I approach every book is can this be in the market and can yeah. I bring it there yep no. and do I want to bring it there those are the three questions I probably ask myself mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. you know also if I love it but also I think for us loving a book is the start of the race right like when I'm starting to read a book I love it cool but then can it find a place in the market can I bring it there and do I want to are the questions that have to take me over the edge so yeah because I can love a book I have read a lot of published books in the course of my life that I probably would never work on. Yeah, I just read a, a submission that I loved. I read it all the way to the end and I was like, thank you, I'm gonna let you go. <laughs> like, it wasn't for me, it wasn't for me. Yeah. No but I wanted to read it and I know it will be published and eventually I'll see it on shelves and maybe I'll buy a copy, but it's just not something that I wanted to be doing. And I think those questions are happening on both sides too. So anyway, we've gotten off on What else topic. is new? We are on a tangent people um but we wanted we to need, tell we need madison here with like the hook or something yeah like the hook. <laughs> start rambling or a zapper right. um just to keep, keep us on people are done <laughs> if anybody's wondering this is what a regular conversation between us looks like too <laughs> yeah live and in person this is what this yeah, is yeah that's why we need agendas when we have conversations that's true anyway um anyway want... what happens once you and your agent, you're all signed, you're working together, you finish the revisions on the book. And yeah. what Jamie wants to know is what happens when the agent is ready to go on submission? Actually, let me rephrase that because one of the things I always say to clients is that as we're working on revisions before submission is that when we both agree, this book is the best it can be and it's time to go out. That's a joint decision. It's not just me. Yeah, and I think that's a good way to phrase it too, because the whole, really, the whole submission process is a joint submission, a joint decision, and a joint venture. I would say, mm -hmm. right? But we we both have our own roles, and yeah. I think it's really important that we, while we communicate what we're doing, we stick to our own roles. So, yes. on the, I'll talk about the agent side first. On the agent side, our job is to coordinate the submission, to you know, using our contacts and our expertise of what people are looking for and what the market's looking for, all that fun stuff. We're making a submission list and, and writing a pitch letter. A pitch letter yeah. is very similar to what's on the back of a book or the, the jacket flap of a book. We want to write a letter that when editors open it, they're like, I have to drop everything and read this. Um, yeah, so there's two steps that we're doing sort of simultaneously. Usually while the author is finishing that last round of revisions, that polishing, and that's the submission list and the letter. So let's talk about the letter yeah so the letter is it's it's like your best example of persuasive language <laughs> like you want to convince the person reading that pitch letter that they have to read this book but also that they have to do it like we want them to do it immediately yeah, um, it's, so it's our the back pitch... cover copy of the book yeah with our own twist we do share them often with the team yeah, we are very collaborative in that where if we're stuck, we share, or even if we think it's good, we'll share and get people's thoughts. Now, personally, every agent's going to be different. I don't share it with the author. 
Um, I do. I, yeah, I don't tend to share it with the author and ask for feedback from the author. Um, I feel like it takes longer. I'm willing to if the author asks. My clients usually don't ask. Um, primarily because I feel I'm pretty good at this. And you can get the too many cooks in the kitchen thing. I use the author's pitch as my starting point. But I also often have a relationship with the editors that might help me spin each pitch a little bit differently, depending on what they know that editor wants. Like, oh, we just had a conversation about that book you loved. This made me think of you immediately kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I actually do share the pitch with my authors because most of them have asked in the past to see it. So I just, it just kind of default to share it. Mm -hmm. um, but I often don't like negotiate them, you know, like it's just, this is the pitch I'm using. And sometimes folks will catch typos because I do sometimes typo. Um, or yeah. folks will catch like if a name changes throughout the revisions that I didn't catch, because sometimes I write the pitch after I first read it, right? Like I like to have their eyes on it to be like accurate and yeah. I get that sign off. But I also, I do it when I send the submission letter because I always send the submission, I'm sorry, the submission list because I always send the submission list to my clients so that they have an idea of who it's going to. Yeah, I send the submission list once it's out on submission. But also I think, I come from the days when everything was done snail mail. Yeah. So unless I was snail mailing the pitch letter to the right. author, there was not really a way to show them. So I yeah. think that my old school ways just become like, well, certainly I wasn't going to snail mail the pitch letter or read it out loud over the phone and then have a discussion at that point. So um, that's why I work very autonomous, autonomously. But like but, I said, I'm not, like I'm said, not against using... I'm not against showing it. I just, it's not part of my system. But actually it's a good conversation. Cause like you said, you're good at this. You've been doing this for long enough that you know how to write a pitch. And I think not always an author's set of skills. So if your agent's writing a pitch, it's because they believe in that pitch and they think that pitch is what's going to get people's attention. So we don't always need extensive feedback. And I think an author's job is to also, unless there's glaring errors or things like that, like just kind of trust that, the agents writing the pitch that they feel they need to write. Listen, we're a team and I come with a skill set and the author comes with a skill set. I can't write a book. I have never pretended I could. I have said this multiple times on these videos. I will never sit down and write a book. I don't pretend to. I can guide you on what I feel is missing or not working in your book. But as I always say to my clients, I'm going to make it sound really easy. And then you're going to call me and tell me I'm kidding myself if you think these changes are easy. I see it as the author's job is to provide me with a really great book that I can sell. And my job is to do my best to sell it. And that is the pitch process and my networking and things like that. Yeah. So, um, so, so once we have, hold on. sorry, go, on, go ahead. No, no, go. I was going to say, once we have that process done, we take the lead on the submission process. Mm -hmm. We're the ones that send it out. We're the ones that, you know, do all the liaisoning with editors and, field their responses and all of that. It's always best if it comes from the agent. A, because that's our job. B, because most editors don't accept unsolicited submissions and they yeah. will be looking for names that they recognize in agents, probably over the name of an author. Um, yeah, and and I always, I think, I don't wanna say always because I'm sure I've forgotten. I often ask my clients, if they've ever had a connection with an editor that they want me to consider but it's consider, not necessarily send to. Because if you're like, yeah, I met this person and they're fantastic and they were at this conference and can you send it to them? Well, I could, except that they don't buy anything close to what you just wrote. And I don't want to waste our shot at that publisher because it just doesn't work that way. Yeah, I almost always reserve the right to make the decision mm -hmm. on like, who I think is best. Um, especially in situations like that. And we often know not just what editors want, and we're not just reading it off an MSWL, right? But we also have lots of conversations within the agency about how collaborative editors are, how responsive they are, and how they treat their authors. And that comes into play. I had an author recently say, I really wanted to submit to such and such editor. And I said, well, I like this editor. We used to work really well together, but she's super unresponsive and I 
do not think that would be the best spot for you right now. And that goes for publishers too, not just the ed specific editor. Like I've done mm-hmm. that for whole publishers. I'm like, no, I don't think that, I think you deserve better than that right now. Yeah. Yeah. So that's part of the submission list. For me, the submission list is constantly changing. It's being updated. I'm adding as I'm having conversations or other people at Bookends are having conversations with editors. I'm like, that's a great person. Let me add them to the list. It's a constant process throughout the time that your book is on submission. It doesn't start and end right away. So creating that list is always fluid for me. And, um, And now how you are kept updated on that is different for every agent. Some agents like to send a giant, here's everybody that has seen your book and passed on it. Um, Some like to send that information as it happens. Um, Some authors don't want to see it very often because it causes anxiety. You had a client who only wanted them sent on Friday, right? Yeah, but then that didn't work out either. Then she didn't like that either. Yeah. But actually, I wanted to talk a little bit about your point about they should, submissions should come from us you know, because we are the point of contact person. I have had clients who decided to take it upon themselves because they had a book that I didn't like and didn't think was going to sell. And they took it upon themselves to just send it to an editor at a house. And the poor editor, I had this very awkward, and it wasn't this author's editor. It was just a submission, which is a whole ball of wax given the contract. But the poor editor was really called me, felt really uncomfortable with the whole situation, felt really sort of put on the spot. It was very awkward for the editor and they had no interest in the book. Yeah. Yeah, so. that's our role. And editors know that that's our role too. So it's important that we all stick to our job. So during this process, which can go on for months, oh. the submission process can go on for months. And I don't want my client just sitting there twiddling their thumbs and, and refreshing email. What I want my client- Yeah, that's doing, my job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. What I want my client doing is working on their next project. I'm a big fan of let's keep momentum going. So that next project might either become the next book on a contract or should we not sell this book? And it happens then I want that project ready to go. So we have the momentum of, okay, this didn't work. Boom. Let's go with the next thing. Let's go with the next thing. Let's go with the next thing. One of the things that I forget to remind my authors and until we've had more experience together, they often, for my new authors, they often don't think to tell me is we should have a discussion about what that next book is before you start writing it. Always. Um, because I don't want you writing something that I don't think that can sell or something that's totally off brand with what we're trying to sell. Or if we're trying to sell a series, the next book in the series that if this doesn't sell, we can't do anything with. Everything we do is strategic. Everything we do is we have a plan. We are doing, we're at least the way I like to work. I like to be intentional. And Mm -hmm. I think the only way that I can be intentional is if you're being intentional. And the only way you can be intentional is if we're talking. So Mm -hmm. I think it's crucial that you and your agent have really strong communication about where do we go from here? Always at every stage, right? Like I don't like my clients to have that feeling of, I don't know what to do next. Like I I always want to be a couple steps ahead. Yeah. And if you don't know, call your agent and say, what should I be doing while you're doing this? What should my plan be? What I would say is Anything that you're doing that you're going to want your agent for, you should have a discussion about. And I think what happens is if you're a newly agented author, you've never talked to somebody about, is this a good idea? You just went and wrote what you wanted. And that's changing now because you want to build a career and a brand. Yeah, it's a big shift. So I get, and, and I forget to say, let me know what you're writing next before you start writing it. Um, so that is on me, but so keeping that communication open is good. Um, so during the submission process that can take months, every agent works differently. Some submitted rounds, some 
you know, like I said, the same with giving you the feedback on the submissions, every agent's going to work differently. So ask your agent what you should expect, when you should expect to get feedback, how they're going to be following up with editors. I will say one thing that is hard for me <laughs> um, is I don't like sort of constant check-ins um, because, but the way I work, and I will say this to my authors, if I have anything to share with you, I'll share it. I don't mind if you're like, hey, I'm getting nervous over here. Can you share it? But every couple of weeks, it just doesn't always happen that fast. No. So, but I think, again, having that conversation with the agent about how you need to hear that and also not feeling like you should not feel nervous about reaching out to your agent. Yeah, I think I get the anxiety of what's going on. Like you've not gotten in touch. I like you said, every once in a while, like maybe, you know, can we do a check-in or whatever? That's totally fine. But constant check-ins can feel micromanaging. Well, and I'm not constantly checking. I will never constantly call my authors and say, hey, your due date's coming up. How's the book coming? Hey, again, how's this your is... book coming? Hey, do you have this? Hey, do you have this? I assume that you are doing the job that you are contracted or meant to be doing. And I hope that you can trust me. Again, I fully will all sometimes get an email. Hey, I'm getting nervous or I haven't heard anything in a while. I assume you know news, but I just felt the need to check. I'm good with that. Yeah. And I think that's also a conversation with your agent about how often will I hear from you? Yes, very much. So you so. know up front. And I think it's not a problem if you're not hearing from your agent regularly. It's a problem if you're not hearing back from your agent. Oh, for sure. So if you're emailing or calling your agent and you're not you're 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 being ghosted, that's a problem. Big problem. If, if your book is out on submission, you haven't heard anything for four to six weeks. Totally common. Yeah, because <laughs> there's nothing to tell you. <laughs> yeah. Trust me, editors are slow. Four to six weeks is nothing. <laughs> we laugh to hide the tears. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the time you'll speak to your agent the most is when there's movement interest offers. When that stage is happening, this is when I, I tell my clients, you're going to hear from me a lot. Um, you're going to get sick of me probably, but that's the time when you are probably in the most constant communication because there are quicker updates and, you know, there's more discussions about like, oh, this is the offer. This is what I want to do. This is the strategy. Um, so part of Jamie's question, and I, I do want to address it too, is like, I'm looking for a good business person and a shrewd negotiator. And then another part of that question was, how do I know? Like everything that's mm. forward facing is MSWL taste, stuff like that about the book. But how do I know what kind of agent you are? Um, and I wanted to stress that a lot of the times you're not going to know everything until you're in the agent relationship, which is difficult. But there are two things that you can do to get the most information possible. The first is to have specific questions and ask every single one of them. Yeah. On the on the offer of representation call. And the second is to speak to clients. And I, maybe other agents aren't going to like me for saying this, but I think the ask those same questions to another writer who has sold the book with that agent. Ask how they work. Ask how they communicated with them. You need to, you're not you don't have your own experience with that person. The only way to know it is to know how that person works with other people. And as for specific questions, the one that most immediately pops to mind is when we get an offer, how do you usually handle them? Exactly. What are your steps? And how, and then for you as the author, how does that feel to you? You know, how hard do you negotiate? What do you negotiate? Um, what kind of rights do you work to keep or sell? Um, you know, I think all of those things will give you an idea of, and, and then you trust your gut. What feels good to me? What did this agent say versus this agent that feels good to me? Um, and then I think the talking to clients is really key. How do you feel the agent does in negotiating for you? It's exactly. just a very simple, like, how do they negotiate for you? Do you feel good when you sign the contract that you're getting the best deal you could get? That's the only way you're ever going to know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, and there are agents who don't, there are, every agent's different. Every agent negotiates differently. Um, yeah negotiating is my superpower and I love doing it. It's my favorite part of the job. I have to say it's my favorite part of the job, but, and we have, you know, and at bookends too, we have lots of conversations about where 
we push each other. Another conversation, another question, like how do you interact with your colleagues? How involved are they? How collaborative are you? Yeah, because one of the things we do at Bookends too is we'll ask questions. Hey, I'm going to go back to this publisher and negotiate. Has anybody ever gotten this? Has anybody ever gotten pushback on this? So that we know when we're going in sometimes too, like, oh, I didn't think to ask for that or, oh, I didn't know. That's great to hear. Like there's conversations we have here all the time about all of this. Yeah. So I think it's, I think there's never, I think the hard part about Jamie's question is that there's never like set in, like it's never set in stone. You you don't know until you're kind of working together on a lot of these things, but the best thing you can do is just inform yourself through question asking, conversation, communication, and asking other people their experience. I think that's the best way to know the business side of an agent that's not already put online. I feel like we're in a different situation because a lot of our business presence is on these videos, but there are yeah. so many agents who are not vocal online, who don't tweet, who don't, you know, that aren't public with their work ethic and their, their style of agenting. So the best thing you can do is ask as many questions as possible. Well, and that's such a good point that Jamie made because most of us as agents, our public persona is trying to get more clients. Right. But once it comes to negotiating, obviously the details are private. Yeah, it's a really that's a good So point. it's not like I can go negotiating and I'm certainly not going to tweet the steps as I'm negotiating. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like the iceberg. For this. The iceberg meme, like getting right. clients, signing clients, success all at the top, but everything else is under the water. Yeah, yeah. So. And the other question I would ask the agent, um, in addition to how do you negotiate, how involved am I? Yeah. So when I'm negotiating a contract, I'll go back to the author. I'm going to go back. I'm going to counter. I'm going to ask for this and this and this. Here's what they came back with. I think we can go for more. I think we can go for this. Like I want that and I'll explain it, like how that's going to play out. But um, I think you want to make sure that the agent is keeping you, which is what you said about this is when you the author hears from you the most that the agent is keeping you for, informed along the way and that you're not hearing, we got an offer. Great, I accepted the offer, expect the contract soon. Oh, no, 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 yeah, no. So, um, and, and when I say collaborative, you as the author don't need to have all of these ideas. It's my job to do this. And if you trust that your agent is going hard and doing everything they can, you can just sit there and listen and say, that sounds great to me. I trust you. I'm good. I mean, you know, when the mechanic fix, fixes my car, I don't like go to YouTube and study it and then follow up with the mechanic and say, did you check the resonator? No, because I don't even know what that is. That is something you would do, though. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, that's not how you do it. <laughs> I um, I know that sound and that is not that. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, that... of it is trust. And I think the, the best way to formulate that trust, especially when you're just getting started, is clear, concise communication. I, everything about this trust, trust. It's a business relationship. Yeah. If you if you went into business to open a bakery or a law office or a fitness studio with oh, no. somebody, not a, a fitness studio, I mean, those the things bakery. go under <laughs> every week. But anyway, I would not recommend that. <laughs> If you go into business with somebody, you need to trust. And, you know, you also, hopefully, if you're going to be good partners, you have your roles. You know, you're in charge of this end of it. You're in charge of this end. And I trust the other person to be keeping me apprised of what they're doing and to do their best work. And that's what's sort of happening here. I trust you as the author to be writing your best work to keep me apprised if things are going awry and such and such and if you need my help but i trust you and hopefully you'll trust me i also know trust takes time for everybody. yeah yeah, yeah. for sure so i hope we op we answered jamie's question did we get them like, all i think we did i think we did i feel like that was a pretty detailed conversation well um, if we missed anything we can always do another video yeah so jamie if you're watching this let us know if we answered your question in the comments and if we got to do a part two we'll do a part that would be two. so sad if jamie wasn't watching Oh my God. I wish there was a way to notify Jamie. Jamie, I hope you're watching. Me too. And thanks for the question. We liked it. Yeah. Okay. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you back here next time. And that's Bye. it. Yeah. That's it. That's, that's it. it. I'll see you later.
<laughs> We're getting real comfortable doing these. <laughs> <laughs>